In this video, we're going to be talking about life support, life, quality of life, and miracles. As a disclaimer, what I have to say in this video is not medical advice. I merely share my experiences, what I have seen and observed. Now, if you haven't seen my previous video, Clarion Call Out of Presumption into Reality, you must see that video before you see this one to get a good background about what I'm talking about. In that video, I talk about my daughter that was born and how she became very disabled and ultimately she passed away. In a nutshell, this is what happened. My daughter, while she was in the womb, everything was normal as far as, you know, every all the tests came back normal, the ultrasound looked good, everything like that. During the birth, the uh, the doctors ascertained that the the cord, the umbilical cord was either pinched or kinked for quite some time, and she was more or less stillborn. She was born clinically dead, no vital signs whatsoever. The cord was cut immediately. She was rushed to the other side of the room, put under an, uh, like an incubator, and um, and resuscitated. The the doctors uh, estimate that she went. 10 to 20 minutes without oxygen. I went into another room very quickly to pray, and while I was praying, she was resuscitated. Her heart started beating. And, and so she was put on life support immediately, and she was rushed to another hospital in another city. Right from the very first day, the doctors would want to meet with me and talk to me about all of the different options that we have. And the doctors, in a very, in the best way they could, uh, painted out the worst case scenario, you know, your daughter will never, uh, may not even live from minute to minute, may not even live the next hour, you know, uh, and if she does live, she will uh, be brain dead and a, a, a complete uh, vegetable, and she won't know anything. And basically the doctor said, I think that we should just pull the plug, so to speak. We should just remove life support. Right from the very beginning, I fought that idea. I said, no, listen, I believe in God and I believe in a God of miracles. Now, the doctors, all the doctors that I talked to, and I talked to many doctors over the lifespan of my daughter, and they all said, yes, miracles do happen. They, they all admit that. But they were saying, well, okay, you believe in God, when will a miracle come? And I couldn't give them a definitive answer. It's like, just hold on a little bit longer. You know, hold the life support a little bit longer. You know, I believe that wherever there is life, there is hope. And, and so let's cling on to that life. And so that is what I said right from the very beginning. Where there is life, there is hope. And so day after day, Every day, the doctor would call me aside and say the same thing. And so I would just say the same thing back to him. You know, no, we, we don't want to remove life support. We want to give her a chance. We want to give, you know, enough time for God to work here. And so she remained on life support until eventually, one day, she was removed from life support. She did not need life support anymore. However... The damage done to her brain it, because of the lack of oxygen, she wasn't able to, uh, she didn't have the motor skills as a normal uh, child ha would have. She wasn't able to walk, okay? She wasn't able to talk because her tongue was, out of the many parts of her body that was partially paralyzed, her tongue was one of them. So she couldn't talk. She couldn't swallow properly and she couldn't breathe properly because she had no control of her tongue. Her tongue could block the, the back of her throat. So she had to have a trach to breathe and a G-tube to be fed. And so my daughter improved to the point where when we would go to see the doctor with our daughter the doctor would look and say well the you know the child looks you know fairly good all things considered how about you how are you doing and so i can testify i can witness to the fact that the doctors always gave the worst case scenario and a lot okay with all due respect to the doctors and yes you know we need to give the doctors all due respect with all due respect to the doctors much of what they said did not 
happen, okay? They told me many times, your daughter would not have emotions. She would not be able to communicate with you. You know, she would not be able to enjoy anything. Well, that wasn't the case. My daughter and I, you know, she lived three and a half years, and my daughter and I had lots of good times together. I enjoyed her, and I'm sure she enjoyed me. And I remember being in the hospital, and uh, the doctors wouldn't take this stand. The doctors wouldn't say this to us, but there was this one nurse in one of the hospitals that w- that looked at looked at me as like, oh, you know, like how dare you uh, let her live, you know? Because you know, what about the quality of life? What about her quality of life? So I want to talk about quality of life here. What is quality of life, and who? has the authority to define quality of life. Quality of life, if quality of life is being happy, I know people who are disabled, severely disabled, that are happier than a lot of people that are not disabled. So is quality of life defined by the abilities that you have to move or uh, to function? If you can't move your hand like everybody else, or if you can't move your legs like everybody else, or if you can't talk like everybody else, does that mean that you have a poor quality of life? Is quality of life defined by your skills? Or is quality of life defined by your happiness? I know people that are severely disabled, and yet they have better quality of life in regards to being happy than a lot of people who are not. You know, I've heard of people who are very rich and they they have everything that they would ever, you know, need or ask for. And yet they are in severe depression. And many of them, we and you and I both know, you can think of uh, celebrities that have committed suicide. Okay. And these celebrities have all the money, all of the sex, drugs, and rock and roll you can ever imagine, okay? So uh, is quality of life defined by the amount of money you have, by the amount of motor skills you have, or is it by the amount that you're blessed, how happy you are? So I would seriously challenge anybody who defines quality of life by your skills or by your motor skills or by your abilities or disabilities. Now, I pretty much lived in the hospital for months, okay, with with my daughter. I was there almost all the time. I saw a lot of things going on. I had a lot of time to talk to the nurses and the doctors. One of the things that really stuck out to me, now I was talking to one of the the pediatric specialists, one of the top-notch pediatric specialists in the country. And I was talking about the, uh, the, the topic of life, okay? Did my daughter actually die when she was born? And they said, well, she had no vital signs. There, you know, she wasn't breathing. Her heart was not beating. I said, well, when did she die? And they're like, well, you know, we think that she didn't have oxygen for about 10 to 20 minutes and there was no vital signs. Uh, there was no movement, nothing. Uh, uh, and, and they said, but her heart could have been beating but just not detectable. So I challenged the doctor, where do you draw the line between life and death? And the doctor couldn't put his finger on a specific line between life and death. He said, well, there's no vital signs, no breathing. You can say she's dead, but there could be life still in there. It's like, well, the wind could be blowing, it's just the leaves might not be moving. It's just, you still could have movement of air, but we just don't have evidence. So there still could be life there, we just don't see any evidence of that life. And so the doctor himself, the specialist himself, could not put his finger on a real definition of life and death. And that was quite remarkable, seeing that a doctor, you know, specializes in this kind of thing. All in all, my daughter and I had three and a half precious years together. They say, hindsight is 2020. Looking back, I would not change a thing. I would not tell them to pull the plug. And it really, truly breaks my heart to see and to hear of other parents or family members that tell the doctor to pull the plug on their loved ones. I know what they've been through. I know what the doctors say. I know what they hear. But it breaks my heart because where there is life, there is hope.
And I know some people would say, well, if God wants you to live, you'll live. You know, God doesn't want you to depend on man-made machines or man-made inventions to live. You know, just pull the plug. If God wants you to live, you'll live. Well, you can say the same thing about deadly diseases that doctors have found a cure for. Well, don't take that antibiotics because that's man-made. You know, God doesn't want you to be on, you know, to be dependent on a pill. If God wants you to live, you'll live. That's in my opinion, that's stupidity, okay? If God wants you to live, God will give people the ability to invent machines or medications that will prolong your life. That is a blessing. So on one hand, I know what it's like to have a loved one, to hear what the doctors have to say, to hear all of these negative reports, and and to fight for life regardless, to say, do not take that person off life support. I know what it's like, I've seen it, I've seen the outcome. On the other hand, there is another family member that I have witnessed that went the other way. They didn't want to be on life support, and I've seen firsthand what the outcome of that was. I was there when they took life support off of that person, that person, and I, by the way, went through hell, okay? Six hours of struggling to breathe until death. Now that was a horrific experience. I know what it's like. I have seen it firsthand on both sides of the spectrum. I've seen what it's like to fight for life support. I've seen what it's like to remove life support. And I can tell you by my own experience, according to what I have seen and observed, the life support option and to maintain life support at all costs, to sustain life at all costs, is by far the best option. Choose life.